There are 4,218 PS2 games, and I'm beating every one of them. I've got to own the game because I'm playing everything on the original hardware, but I've beefed it up with a RetroTINK 5X, some component cables, and more to come soon. Can I do this before I die of old age? I hope so. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3 was released in 2007 for the PS2 and shortly after for the Wii. The third installment included mostly everything from the previous ones with new moves, over 160 characters, and a few goodies. It released to an average reception and is remembered finally by many players. Can I beat this expensive fighting game? I want to start by saying that I am not good at fighting games, and this may not be a traditional fighting game, but my brain sees it as one, so it's difficult for me to understand. So the concepts of this game, I just don't grasp in time enough for me to complete this game and know everything about it. So just bear with me, and this is just my one-time experience with this game. So if you like this, if you have fond memories of it, it is a good game. It's really interesting, and I do wish I could have the time to sit down and learn more, but I don't. I've got to beat these games. So here we go. First off, I am not going to go over the story of Dragon Ball Z at all because this game chops up and removes a lot of it. Mostly because, well, it's like 290 some episodes in reality, and this game took about three streams, about two hours each, and there's no way it's gonna cover everything that was there, and that's fine. I think that's a that's a fine thing, but if you're coming to this as a new player who doesn't know anything about Dragon Ball at all, or only knows a very little bit, you will be pretty confused about what's going on, especially because there are a few changes here and there that you'll not understand are changes. It'll just be very confusing story-wise. So I won't be going over it because, like I said, there's just not enough of it to explain. So this is how I determined how to beat the game. After looking through the different options I had, we realized that you can get credits if you play the main sagas of the Dragon Ball series, which includes the Saiyan Saga, the Frieza Saga, the Android Saga, the Majin Buu Saga, Dragon Ball GT Saga, and the Dragon Ball Saga. Those will, after being beaten, show you credits. And that is enough for me. That is all I need to do to beat these games anyway, so that's what I do. Each of these sagas is fairly short short because there's only so many actual battles that you'll be able to fight in them. Most of them have a lot of story and a lot of training that you won't do yourself. Obviously you can go to a training mode to train if you'd like to. So there's only about three or four battles in most of them. Some of them do carry on about eight or nine battles because there are quite a few that they can finally milk out of them, which is good because otherwise this is pretty short. When I began the game, I started out by going into training mode after I failed twice in the normal battle. I had no clue what the buttons did or what I was capable of. And after training for almost an hour, learning all the different button presses, a couple combos, and how to charge my character up, I was able to, as a casual player, successfully beat all the modes I needed to beat, which is perfect for me. However, here's exactly how some of the things worked that I figured out. At the top of the screen, you can see a big green health bar. Most of the time it will be green, but if you have more than one health bar available on a character, it will change change colors, just to kind of indicate that you're on a new health bar. However, above the health bar, there are small green pips. Each of these pips represents another full health bar underneath the one you currently have. That means you have to watch out for your own health as well as the enemy's health to see exactly how much they have left. Underneath these are six yellow bars. These fill up as you charge your character. By pressing the right trigger, or R2, you can charge your character up until they have enough power to unleash their special moves. There are many different special moves and a combo list you can look up yourself because to be honest with you I don't know all of them I don't even know exactly what they do I just know that the ones that worked for me worked for me just fine most of the ones I used were the ranged ones because those are the easiest to charge up far away from an enemy and then blast them in the face from a mile away which is what I did most often there is a number below your character's portrait that also determines the level of some of these special attacks although again I didn't really use that very often most often I found myself charging my character up until I was satisfied pressing the correct buttons to use a long-range special attack like a Kamehameha wave or a special beam and then just unleash it and do that over and over again. So that concludes all the stuff that you can see at the top of the screen but that's mostly what I learned. I did learn a few Z rush attacks that I could use in between charging my character up if they got too close to me and I couldn't charge my character to do those long range attacks. And this was my bread and butter. Doing a Z rush attack and then when I knocked them away charging up to fire a big old blast at them. Another Z rush attack and then charging up a big old blast at them. That was pretty much it. There are many more more complex things you can do in this game, like being able to dodge and teleport behind someone, deflecting attacks, things I just didn't have the time to learn, but do make the game even more fun than it already is. However, I did see some people saying how this game just wasn't as competitive as other fighting games, and I can understand that. Each of the characters shares a lot of similarities. Even though they have their own special moves, most often you'll find yourself wanting to get in close, and everyone has pretty similar close range attacks with teleporting, so you never really have that specialized of a 
character. Not anything like Tekken or Street Fighter. Nothing, nothing like that. It's, it's, it's a lot more bare bones in that area, especially with how some of the attacks work. You aren't looking for frames between the attacks and when they connect and when they hit and where they hit. It is much more about just kind of understanding what your opponent can do, which you can do the same thing, and then just countering it. So I can see how it wouldn't be as competitive as other games. Although I do see a competitive scene and it looks pretty insane. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I don't want to go over each battle individually because as I said, it was mostly the same thing over and over. All of the battles consisted of me charging up and hitting them with a long range attack while using the Z rush technique to rush them down, melee them and knock them away until I could charge again. Or I would just fly away as fast as I could to charge while the AI figured out what it wanted to do. While I did lose quite a few battles and I had to retry them, most of the time I just won. And again, this was about a six hour game. So it wasn't like that there's that much robust content. One hour of that was spent practicing. The other hours were spent playing and going through the story, but I will explain how some of the battles work just so that you understand what you can do in each of them. As you complete some of the sagas and as you go through each of the battles, a lot of them are story battles. So you'll have characters talking to each other or you'll have characters switch out depending on what battle it is. Let's say one of the first battles where Piccolo and Goku are fighting Raditz. There are various times where you can press R3 to switch between the characters. This will help both story-wise understanding what's going on, but also being able to beat Raditz in the first place, as he's pretty freaking tough if you don't switch. Because that means you have two characters with two health bars, and also the story progresses in such a way that allows you to kill Raditz by using Piccolo's special beam, just like it did in the show. And if you can get to that point where you can use a special beam to hit him and kill him, then you can instantly win. If you don't switch, like I do a few times until I learn that that's what you're supposed to do, I die very, very quickly and very often. Then I start switching, and I get to the point in the story where I can just perform it and win, and I do. So it's very important to use those prompts on the R3 button to switch characters so that you can progress the story in the correct way. There are some instances, however, where you don't have to. If you're performing well enough, you can just skip pressing the R3 button and finish the fight early, which I did in the Dragon Ball GT saga. I was able to do that and just skip a lot of the prompts and a lot of the story, and it didn't take nearly as long. But, you know, most likely if you're a casual player, you're going to want to use those R3 buttons. I think I just got lucky then. There are cutscenes in between some of the fights and during some of the fights. However, you really won't get nearly, nearly as much story as you would like or need to understand things. So it's just kind of flavor. If you already know, this is just to refresh your memory about the current battle, much more so than learning anything new, which is fine because this game is fun. I have to say that this is one of the best representations of becoming powerful and feeling powerful in a game like this, at least for me. I have never played these games, so it was really cool. It made me feel like I was playing these characters, like I got to control what happened, knocking people away, charging up, and then blasting them in the face at the right moment so they could dodge. That was super fun, and the auras around the characters getting bigger and bigger, all the big huge attacks, the way that they showcased them, knocking things away, it felt very much like I was playing the anime, and that is absolutely wonderful. Now, it did get a little too realistic on some of them. When I lost a lot of my options for combat, I would have some trouble, such as the fight where I had to use Hercule to distract Boo, and then let the other characters come in later by pressing the R3 button. He kicked my ass because I have very few options as Hercule. I'd use his special moves that just took up time until the R3 button prompt showed up. Otherwise, I couldn't fight him like I did the other characters, and I just couldn't win. For about 20-30 minutes, I would fight that guy over and over, and I had some trouble just because of the options. But other than that, the rest of the game was really fun. It was just a very solid experience. Now, there are tons and tons of other modes to play, like What If Sagas, where they say, hey, what if this happened instead of this? It's kind of cool to see the uh, different ideas they had on what story elements and beats would have happened had a certain thing not or did happen a different way, which is really cool. They did that type of stuff in comic books a long time ago with the Avengers, like What If series, which is really cool. I like those things just for fun, especially if you know the story well. It's kind of cool to see that. Although for me, it wasn't something I did because it wasn't necessary for me to beat those to get the credits, so I didn't play them. There are also even more modes that you can play with different stories and movie stories and all of these different things you can play. There are tons of modes, but the story, the main story itself was very, very short. So that's about it. While this video could be a lot longer with me explaining small, intricate details about the game, I really didn't learn enough to be able to do that properly. So I'm going to end the video here saying I absolutely recommend this game for anyone who wants to play it because these games are really fun. And if you know Dragon Ball, like Dragon Ball in any way, or want to experience these games, they are perfect. They make you feel like you're actually playing the anime. You get to play characters that are fun. It's very accurate and it's just a good time. So it's totally worth playing. But this is game number 67B. And 
And I have one thing to say that's special about this game. I will be doing a giveaway near the end of August, the last weekend in August. That will be August 31st, which is a Saturday, and September 1st, which is a Sunday. I believe Sunday night is when I will choose the winner. As long as you are in the stream and have signed up and put your name on the sheet, I will draw a name from that list, and whoever wins gets the game. Now, like I said, this game goes about $200 physically, so this is a pretty valuable game. So if you'd like it, please stop on by and hang out for a little bit. Please be there when I do draw the names I'd like people to be there to say this is me and we make sure we get things together that's just i want to do it properly because i would like to be safe but i want the person who wins to get game now i want to say my thank yous to everyone who is here to watch the video who stayed this long to watch the video thank you so much i really do appreciate anyone who stops by thank you everyone in the stream for helping me through this game even though i had some issues here and there and i'm just not good at fighting games but i appreciate everyone who stopped by to hang out thank you also to all the youtube membership the patreon memberships and the twitch subs thank you all so much you really do make this possible. Otherwise, it would be a little bit hard to get some of the games, but it's really possible now, and everyone's getting to choose games. I just pretty much give it to anyone who donates or signs up. I just say, pick a game, I'll play it. And that's what we've been doing. We have a long list of games coming up, an enormous list of games coming up that I'm gonna be playing over the next year, and it's probably gonna take six to seven, eight months to beat all of these games, which is great, but also that's just gonna be a long time playing. I do have some games that I've already beaten with videos coming out soon, and hopefully that won't be too long from now. I assume Soon we'll see Mega Man Anniversary Collection as well as Dark Watch. And those will be great videos too. So thank you all so much. I'll be back for another video soon. Later.